Since the Sandbox fans, we're back. It's two days before the NBA Finals. Only right we bring Pino back into the building. Chef yeah. Anthony Pino, how are we doing today? First time in the new studio, feeling pretty good. It's comfy, comfy seats. Oh my god, I, I, I was gonna say, like, you're not sweating. Feel pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not sitting right in front of the camera or sandwiched in between me and Kevin shifting your I, I was always, I felt, felt nice in there, felt cozy. You know? <laughs> felt like home, absolutely. Yeah, sure. But we got the Celtics playing against the Dallas Mavericks. As, going as predicted, Celtics in the finals, as we predicted. Yeah, as, as you predicted, ago, Celtics in like three. Like right around Christmas, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. I know. Oh, your, your daughter gave you a little backlash on that, but we, we love that that Boston coming out of her. She just loves it. to give me backlash on any chance <laughs> she can give me a backlash, so she's into it. Sounds like a perfect daughter to yep, me. Yep. Did you expect to see the Dallas Mavericks in the finals? No, no, definitely not. When we talked about our playoff preview, you know, we were talking about how if their roster came together, they had like the stars and they had the, the score and punch to do it. But no, I, I definitely I expected Denver the whole time. Yeah, you know, I did too. And, and seeing seeing the the Mavs make that run, and then especially. You know, push Minnesota just push Minnesota out in five games. I was I was very surprised, but everybody it, was like, "Oh my God, Minnesota's winning it all! They're way too strong." Yep. I just felt like in, in the TNT crew, who we hope stays together, of course. Sure. Um, they kind of talked about it a little bit, and Charles specifically said, "Like the NBA just comes down to matchups." Yeah. And I feel like the Timberwolves were the the perfect kryptonite for the Nuggets because Jokic was. By far, you know the the best player. Yeah, you know? and you got the depth that can kind of filter around, play solid defense there, and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, and Jokic, he had a great series. Like, no, he, he did what he could do. It just, you know, it's 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 tough. It's really hard to repeat in yeah. the modern day NBA, and you know just how how Denver got knocked out when everyone thought they were right back in. It just shows it. That's sure. crazy. I um I was talking over like the weekend while we were in Tampa, and I, I said. If you had told me, you know, round one of the playoffs, like we had the conversation about the Mavericks and like the Clippers in like sure. the same sentence. So now that now that we're talking about them here, if you told me round one of like the NBA playoffs that we were going to play the Mavs in the finals, I would have been amped up. I'm, honestly, I'm still hyped. Yeah. I'm still, <laughs> I still think it's a good matchup for the Celtics. But yeah, no, I definitely at, at that point even more so. Yeah. You know, it, it feels like kind of like the the not as drastic as the Heat run from an eight seed last year. But seeing the Mavs come up from a five seed and make it to the finals, you know, you just hope it's like one of those things where their their time is up and their their run runs out and in the finals against our team. You know? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. So, you know, everyone's been talking about you know the play of Luka Doncic and and stuff like that. Do you believe going into this series that more likely than not he's the best player on the court? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, right now he's, he's everything he's done kind of shows that he's he was what second in MVP voting or third. Like he's just always in the conversation for MVP. Uh, I mean, like we talked about last time, this guy's a uh, he's been playing professionally since he was sixteen. Yeah, he was winning European Champions Leagues when he was sixteen with Real Madrid, seventeen years old. You know, so yeah, I mean, he's he's in his prime, he's at his peak, and and the only thing we can really hope is that. We have two guys who are in their prime and at their peak. The Celtics have uh, Brown and Tatum, who are both like all NBA level, and you hope that neutralize one. Like you know, if 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 Luca and Tatum both drop forty, fantastic. Now can Brown outplay your next best player? Tyree, you yeah. know, and yeah. then beyond that, can can you go further down the roster? And I think as we go down the roster, you're going to see the Celtics are way way deeper than the Mavericks. And if those guys can step up and continue playing and having those insane seasons that they've all been having at the same time, then I think the Celtics got it. No, for sure. And, and I think, you know, on the Mavericks front, they've been getting, you know, great play from their interchangeable bigs. Jones yeah. had big moments. P.J. Washington dropped 25-plus yeah. points, hitting yeah. five-plus threes throughout yeah. the series. And obviously, you know, Lively's kind of been, like, really energetic for them. And yeah. that, that core... That, that was that was solid in like you know the the series that they were in. I just don't feel like any of those players are going to be better than KP or Al Horford when we we start like comparing like the bigs on that front. Yeah, I mean Porzingis, you you kind of hope that they held him out a little longer than they had to because they felt like they had that Pacers series Wiggle in the run. back, yes, especially yes. when you saw like Donovan Mitchell go down and then Tyrese Halliburton go down. And they're like, okay, 
they just, we should be able to handle this and let Porzingis rest. And yeah. they did. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people are complaining about like, wow, the Celtics had an easy road. Who but gives like, a fuck? Well, like, <laughs> no, but even so, like you did exactly what you're supposed to do with an easy road. Yeah. They won a five game, a five game, and a four game series. Like that's what you want to do when you have Absolutely. an easy road. If they had an easy road and they're stretching these six, seven game series and having a win on the road and all this stuff. They didn't you don't have feel to do that. It. Yeah. They did exactly what you're supposed to do when you have an easy path. They're twelve and two in the playoffs, walking into the finals. Hopefully, add full health with Porzingis back and everybody else playing at their peak. Absolutely, and I feel like this is kind of like what we've been waiting for. Like, I don't think you know, like how we put the asterisks on like the Lakers championship with like the bubble and stuff like that. Like, there's none of that like in this conversation yeah, whatsoever. No. Look, outside fan bases are going to say oh, that because, will hit. because yeah. Oh, we were the best team all year. Oh, we got the easy like, like the the Bucks crumbled. Wait, like where were they? Everyone was saying, "Oh, the Heat, the Heat." They they've been in Cancun for three yep. weeks now. Yep. You know, so and I, you know injuries did affect those teams. Yeah, like it, so it's unfair. To, like to me, it's unfair to say they crumbled. Like injuries took them apart. Yeah, but but yeah, the Celtics are here. They did everything they needed to do. They've answered every question that's been asked of them, and they're here in the finals, and they should be the favorite. Absolutely. No, I, I think they should too. So I'm excited to break it down. Like, I have a couple of things that I wanted to go over, and sure. just Kevin Lua coming in this weekend, and we have, like, another NBA discussion going down. Love it. Um, so I want to get your thoughts on that so we can kind you of can just prepare. tell them I'm right and they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Absolutely. Kevin. Yeah, no, Kevin's always wrong. Let's make sure that we put that out there now. Um, but let's before we get into like any of like the details, let's yeah. talk about like the series. What are you expecting? Game one, obviously the most important of the series. You know, the Celtics haven't been playing, you know, as good at home as they have been on the road. Like just so happens like to, yeah. to work out that way, but it is only two losses in three series. Yeah. How will we feel? What are your expectations? I mean I'm not the the home losses are not really bothering me when you're winning series in five games. Yeah. You know, like the old gentleman sweep, like okay, all whatever. Day. It doesn't bother all me day. at all. Um I think they do have to like step up and make a statement win. Like you you know, you need like an eight to ten point win. Mm -hmm. You know, something that's comfortable, you know, where you're dribbling the ball out in the last 30 seconds minute of the game trying to like make your free throws where it's not like oh my god we got to make this shot and and you know what the the crazy thing is they they came through in those situations against indy yeah they shouldn't have been in them no. i agree with you on that but like when the time came they hit the threes they hit the crazy shots tatum had an explosive overtime and you win the game anyway yeah so like ideally you do that in the end of the fourth quarter not the end of overtime but <laughs> I, I feel like uh they're gonna make this this happen game one um I like them to win it by like eight, eight, nine points. Game one. All yeah. right, love that. I think, you know, in, in me specifically, I, I won't speak for Kev, but I know I talked a lot about defining moments throughout yeah. like a lot of our conversations, and I feel like we're starting to see that. And it wasn't only with JT. He did take over, and that's a large reason why, you know, that, that we were able to win that game. But JB hitting that clutch shot at like the end of the game. It's insane. See how come holding his ass. Like, what's going on there, guy? Yeah. <laughs> but no, he's just trying to keep his hands off and stuff. But I feel like even though it's sloppy and wasn't the way it was expected to be, those are just as important because yeah. that's still adversity. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we were in a deficit. We were down 13 to them multiple times yeah. throughout the series and being able to overcome that, knowing that. If KP is down, Drew can still get, step up and give yep. us more. I will say, like, I, I think it's been a little bit since we had a, a huge Derek White game. We got yep. 23 points last series, and that's okay. But I just feel like those five, and, and if we want to toss Al Horford, like, in this conversation, because he's been he's practically been a starter for us the, the entire yes. playoffs. Well, he's had to be. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as as long as they play the way that they have been, I believe we have six of the better players like on the court through and through. Obviously, you know, with the Luca um, and Kyrie exception, but I do feel like we haven't been getting you know the spark of the energy that we would have kind of wanted out of like Hauser and Pritchard. Um, yeah, I don't know if you feel that way. Hauser's shooting's been off. Uh, Pritchard's had really limited minutes, so it's tough to tough to like really pass judgments on him right now. And I think those guys' minutes. Uh, as much as they've been important all year, they become even more limited if uh, Horford becomes a bench player. For sure. You know, so if Porzingis comes back, those guys move down a notch in the rotation, and they become situational guys, not necessarily heavy rotation guys, which is fine. Like, that's the role that they're defined on in this team. And, you, you know, you mentioned Derek White. Uh, I think, again, you put Porzingis back in the lineup, and it changes everybody's responsibilities, sure. offensively and defensively. Yeah. So you end up looking at, 
somebody who might have been forced to chase around a bigger player than them and might have been forced to try to get open against a bigger player than them now has a seven foot two guy next to him and doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And his three point shooting becomes a little more open. His lanes to the basket become a little more open. His ability to dish to a seven foot guy who can shoot Caps. becomes a little more open. You yes, know, absolutely. so so hopefully the the readdition of Porzingis and we talked about it before the playoffs. Like we thought he was a huge and integral part of the team and was a key to them being able to win a championship. You know, hopefully having him come back kind of reopens the offense and and frees up some guys defensively. Like Derek White. I think they said he led the league in blocks for a guard. Yeah. We saw some of that in the Indy series. We, and we saw a lot of it in the Cleveland series. He was blocking shots. Now on bigs too. On, like, on everyone. Yeah. Now if he <laughs> if he's able to just focus on guarding a smaller player or guarding an equal size player, now we're looking at uh an advantage again for the Celtics instead of him trying to chase a guy. Yes. You know? Absolutely. So defensively, how how would you like to see our guards up against that? I'm assuming that we're gonna have a mix of, of Drew D. White and, and J B. On Kyrie and Luca throughout, yeah. you know. I mean, Luca's six seven, so if you're gonna put a, a a larger defender on him, you probably want to put Brown on him. Yeah. But White and Drew are the better defenders on yeah. the team, and I feel like those guys have proven their ability to to guard a bigger player. Uh, I don't think anyone on our team is gonna stop Luca Doncic from scoring twenty eight to thirty five if he wants double. to. Yeah. You know. So yeah. so really, what it comes down to is. Can you contain him? You know, if he doesn't score 36, maybe you hold him to 28 and you win by four because he has two less baskets. Yeah. You know, and, and I think defensively we can we can make those one or two stops a game. He's going to he's gonna score. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. There's nothing anyone on the planet can do about it right now. Um, so I just really hope that the, the offense becomes freed up, like we said, and you can outscore them. And at the same time, just bring make those one or two important stops throughout the game that that hold him to twenty eight instead of thirty two, thirty four, thirty six, and then all of a sudden you're, you're winning the game by four or six points. And and you know that's that's all that matters is getting the W once yep. you're in the NBA Finals. Peter, I want to talk about some keys to victory. We talk a lot about the Celtics. I kind of want to go on the Maverick side. Sure. We're obviously hopeful as Boston fans located in Boston that the Celtics win it all. Yeah. But what would it take for the Mavs to win this series? I mean, Kyrie's going to have to go back to his form of being – I mean, he's been in this playoffs, but keep his form of being one of the best players on the planet. Um, it's tough to say that as a Celtics fan. Like, everybody wants to hate Kyrie. I was one of the few that wanted them to resign him at the time, yeah. just because I didn't think we were ever going to be able to get a player of equivalent value to Kyrie to pair with Tatum and Brown. I'm glad we didn't now, but way, you know, in hindsight, that was wrong, and it worked out great with the guys we did add. But uh, I still think he's, he, you know, he's a top three point guard on the planet and a top ten player. You know, most skilled players to touch a basketball. Yeah, he reminds me so much of Allen Iverson. It's it's like. It's like that's insulting to Allen Iverson to me, but he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way he, he doesn't plays, score as great as AI, he, but he shoots better. Yes. and he passes better. Yeah, so like you know, you, you, but you see like glimpses of that, like in his ball handling and when he just gets free from a guy so easily. Um, I think if he can play the way he's been playing all the playoffs, it's going to help out. You know, Luca's going to do what Luca's going to do. You yeah. know, so if you can get that secondary scorer kind of the way we want Tatum and Brown to work for the Celtics, then then maybe you know it opens up. Suddenly, you got to stop and double team Kyrie. Now you got guys shooting outside on, yeah. the, on the maps. You got guys with open looks at the basket for all those lobs that they've been loving to do through all throughout the playoffs. You know, mm-hmm. and and hopefully the Celtics prevent that. But you know, there's there's situations where Kyrie turns into a 35, 40 point scorer, and now you're in trouble. Yeah, I, I mean, if that was to ever be the case, I think it would be really hard for us to pull out a W. And I don't see him doing that for seven games, so that's something I would yeah. say is, is definitely in our favor. I think Luka can drop 30-plus a night with averaging, you know, a triple-double, if not close to that. The thing is, is I feel like Tatum's been pretty close to, like, that triple-double number, yeah, too. And, absolutely. And that's been that's been a development. I know a lot of people been yapping about, oh, he's not putting up, he's not taking the right shot selections. But I still feel like, He's he's shooting close to forty yeah. percent. He's he's making like a lot of the right reads. Like yeah, there's a couple of three pointers, maybe two or three a game that he's settling for and taking like that step back, a lot of dribbling, and you know when he when he probably could attack the rack. But I think we've slowly seen like what that progression is, and it's just different knowing that like we have like five or six mouths to feed. Yeah. Luca can take all those shots and and still be able to. And Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford are not upset that Luca keeps shooting. Exactly, and yeah. nobody is. No, because he's scoring. But like, if you if you honestly think 
that Jason Tatum isn't a major reason why the Celtics are in the NBA Finals. You aren't watching basketball. For sure. Like, he's doing everything the team needs him to do, and they're winning games by 20 points. Like, yeah. how can you be upset if the guy has 23 points with nine assists and 12 rebounds, and, and they win by 20? No, nah, Like, no. he did everything the team asked <laughs> him to do. Yeah. You know, he's making these unbelievable, like, like the behind-the-back pass to Drew Holiday to hit the three to win that game against the Pacers. Like, th- that's perfect basketball. I know. He draws a triple team under the basket. Behind the back pass to the open guy, and he even had a choice. If you look at that that play, he had a choice of who to pass to, and he picked the hot hand because Drew Holiday was nailing everything that he game. Was. And so, so he he drove to the basket, drew a triple team, had the wherewithal to find the right guy to pass it to out of two guys who were open on three. Hits that guy and hits a three. They win the game. Within like a half that's, a second. That's like <laughs> like like uh, Jalen Brown said, put it in the Louvre. Yeah. That's I yeah. at basketball, and like I I. Could not be happier that these are the two guys leading the team. Like, from from watching them come up and, like, people get all over them. Like, oh, they made the Eastern Conference Finals so many times and they didn't win. Like, would you rather they got knocked out in the first round all those times? No! Like, this, <laughs> like, this was great. This is exactly yeah. what we want as Celtics fans. Players who got drafted by the team, grew up with the team, and, and got better. And now, uh, like, prime NBA players in the top of the game, both, like, top 10, top 20 players in the league who are, like, doing everything right. In, in the city, in the league, for their team, like, what more do you want? Like, the people who are still negative and complaining about the Celtics, what do you want? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Go on! <laughs> <laughs> Two-part, okay? Yeah. Do you think that Jalen Brown gained a lot more respect from the outside basketball fan throughout this playoffs to be more recognized, maybe more in that top 15 conversation of basketball? Absolutely. And the second part is... Do you think he was the right player to get recognized after the Eastern Conference Finals? Yeah, I mean, definitely. He was the more aggressive player, the the most of the playoffs. Yeah. You know, and 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 a lot of the people's complaints about Tatum is always not aggressive. He doesn't take it to the basket. He takes these step back threes. Like, that's fine if he's hitting them. I don't care. Take <laughs> step back threes if you're hitting them. If I could hit a step back three, I'd be outside shooting right now. <laughs> but Pino wasn't teaching that in EBY. No, no, no. we were lucky. We, just, we we took jumpers from the elbow. If we were lucky. So so you know, like looking at Jalen Brown, he's. Doing all those things that make a guy a fan favorite. He's driving to the basket. He's dunking on people. He's flexing and yelling. Teams, and like, yeah. You know, he's doing all these things that, like, that's the kind of player you want to go buy his jersey. You want to go buy the sneaker. You want to act like, the, you know, yell his name when you take a shot on the court, you know? And that's fine. And he's doing it alongside a guy who's just playing winning basketball. So between the two of them, like, I don't see how you stop this team from winning the championship. Yeah, I know. I, I agree. And I'm happy you touched on, you know, the keys to win for for Dallas because I agree. And I also feel like those bigs that I kind of feel like aren't going to play as much of a role, if they're catching lobs and and Jones is banging threes and P.J. Washington's hitting threes like that, that's obviously when it's going to be, like, a lot more, like, problematic. Um, But But you had a 7'2 rim protected to our defense and all of a sudden that's not happening. Yes, absolutely. And and I agree. And I hope, like, there's no hiccups with, like, him coming back. There'll be hiccups. Yeah. That's what happens. No, I know. But but I I think they can, I think that they can overcome it, man. I think they can win with him or without him. Absolutely. So I think they will win with him. Yes. And, I mean, he'll be part of the team, but we'll, we'll win it fucking regardless. That's Get all. Him on the court. Get him on the court, please. Uh, yeah. Wheel him out there. The, seven two, and he's probably he's, what's he seven one in a wheelchair. Yeah, right. out <laughs> with his arms up. Yeah. Um, for Boston, keys to win. I don't think it's gonna take you know Drew Holiday having like twenty five point performances. I think like what you talked about a lot earlier with KP being back inserted yeah. in the lineup is there's just gonna have to be a lot more like respect in defense, like. To, to go around, and I actually kind of feel like we're in the opposite scenario of the last time we were in the finals, when we were going against Golden State. Yeah. I kind of feel like we're Golden State this time, and like they're kind of like the Celtics at this point. Um, and, and for Dallas, I mean, this is obviously, you know, a great scenario, them being, you know, in the finals at this point in time, like in their development. I mean, Luke is, what, 24 years old, yeah. if that? If that, so... They found they found you know a guy for Kyrie to to have a partner and he's not going crazy and losing yeah. his mind. You talked about you know JT and JB a little bit. It's a Celtics win the finals. Does that make number seven and number zero go in the Raptors? It's early. I mean they're both in their early twenties. They could we could hate them five years from now and they leave and like a, telling everybody this town sucks and they for go sure. play for Chicago or something. For sure. you know? So so you don't want to say that yet. I don't want to say it yet, but I mean. They're, they're on the path. I mean, there's guys in the Raptors who have way less accomplishments than them already. Yeah. You know, who just happen to be the, the fourth guy on a team that won a championship, you know? Sure. So it's like, do I think they deserve it? 
what is this, what is the Celtic like throw everybody's name up there. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't like at this point we've got like uh, the six of the final start line. We're gonna have guys out there wearing letter Q yeah, because yeah. there's no numbers <laughs> left eventually. So like fine, go ahead. You know, does it, is it gonna bother me to go to Jason Tatum night and watch the Ravens jersey? No, no. I went to Pierce night, I went to Garnett night, they were fun as hell. Love that. You know? I love but that. you know, yeah, I mean I think I, I, they're well on their way. Yeah, you know, you it used to be they talk about this time you need multiple championships to put your name up there because that's what Larry and Mikhail did, and Robert Parrish. That's what all the guys in the sixties and seventies did. But then they put up uh, Pierce, and Garnett. Pierce and Garnett. Garnett played five years here and won one championship. Like, yeah. thanks, it's awesome. No, I had a great sure. time. But yeah, I mean, it's just fun for the fans. Like, go go nuts. Put everybody's number up there. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> one more play I wanted to talk about in this type of a perspective. You feel like Big Al had a better career as a Celtic than a Hawk? I know that's a really tough conversation because I mean, he, he had, had deeper playoff runs yeah. for sure. I mean, a much better like postseason career. Uh, I, I still remember him the, the year that the Celtics won in two thousand eight. He helped the Hawks drag the Celtics to seven games in the first round. Him, Josh Smith, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, oh my god, we thought we were going to win the championship. They won sixty six games in their first season together. We we're like, this is a shoe in for the championship. They're going to knock out everybody, and then the first round. The Hawks with Al Horford and a few other guys drag him to seven games, and I was like, "Oh man!" And that was like kind of when I woke up that all right, Horford's the real deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he was all NBA back then. Now, sure. you know, not so much. I still like to call him all NBA Al because it's fun. <laughs> but, you know. but yeah, I mean, I, I think on a national stage, people will remember him more as a Celtic than than as a Hawk. Hawk. You know, do you think that there's any conversation if we do win it, with the exception of you know the Brown and Tatum conversation at 42 could potentially be up there? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, he came and went a couple times. It's not. Yeah. He's never been the guy. He's always been like the supporting player. Even when he when he first came here as a free agent, it was a big deal because he was one of the first like big free agent signings for the Celtics. You know, they were never really were able to draw guys. Whether it's like the the Boston is racist, you know, thing they had to get over, or just like you know people just didn't want to come here. Um, cold winters, you know, things like that, that just players would rather go to Miami or L.A., you know. For sure. Um, but it was a big deal when they signed him. He was one of the first big free agents they got. I, I can't see them putting the 42 up there unless they win, you know, this year and next Multiple, or something. You know, it's yeah, got yeah. to be a real reason. No, yeah, you absolutely. Know? We were having, like, this conversation. I feel like you know, unless, like, like, if you're a new fan of basketball, you wouldn't understand the type of player that Horford was, like, when he was yeah. playing for the Hawks. But – I also just kind of feel like in the Celtic sentiment that like when when Al Horford is emotionally invested in the game is when we're our best. And I don't know if that's because the other guys can easily feed off that yeah. energy or they're just like, yo, Al is really out here, practically fucking 42 years old. Yeah. And he's been the best player on the court for, I don't want to say, say – Half the games, yeah. but we, you could say twenty five percent of the games. Al Horford's been the best player. He's on the had court some games where he's taught where he's been the best player on the court. But I think, like you, you know, it's a leadership thing. Yeah, they see the vet working hard and like showing up early to practice, staying up late to put shots up, and it makes the rest of the team all work harder around him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's definitely a, a huge positive to have a guy like that on the team around all these young guys. Uh, young guys, they're all six, seven year veterans now. But like you know, I still Crazy look at them as like that. kids in their twenties. You know, yeah. they're they're, they're Having that kind of leadership around and that kind of guy who's been around the block a few times. And, and you know, adding Drew Holiday, another veteran presence who's won a championship, you know, I think it helps a lot. And you you think back to, like you said, emotionally invested Al. You remember the game where uh, Giannis dunked on him and he starts making the face like, okay, okay, okay. okay. yeah. And then he goes off. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do that all the time, Al. Let's do that all the time. That looks great. No, it does. It absolutely does. All right, Pino. So I want to talk about – we we know – Tatum and Brown and, and Luka and Kyrie are the, are the top four players sure. in this series. But I want to include, you know, a, a couple of players, at least from each team. I want you to talk about the top three players in this series, not name those four guys. Yeah, I mean, for the Mavs, you're looking at, like, Lively, Washington, and probably Gafford. And, and and I mean, if you're if you're the Washington Bullets right now, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> how old am I? If you're the Washington, yeah. if you're the Washington Wizards right now, how mad are you that you 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 had the start in front court of the NBA Finals? Is, was your start in front court last yeah. year with uh, Gafford and Porzingis? But I think that's just a testament to bad franchises. It's bad league. franchises, but like you know, they're they're not the top guy on their team either of them right now. You know, they're yeah. not even like the they're the fourth yeah. on their two teams. So yeah. so it's it's. Yeah, I think I think Lively can you know assert his presence in the paint. Washington can draw defenders out, shoot threes. Uh, Gafford's a good you know balanced player on both sides of the court. 
Um, and then on the Celtics, it should be the remainder of their starting five. You know, White and Holiday, we hope that they can play the kind of defense we expect against guys like Kyrie and Luka. And like you said, anytime they make a stop that should have been a basket, you know, you get one of those blocks on, on a drive to the lane that White gets. You get one of those steals that was kind of an unexpected steal by Holiday. You take those two points or three points off the board for the Mavs, that's just as good as them putting two or three on our side of the board. For sure. You know, so like you can win the game with those kind of plays, you know, just by holding a team to 98 or 99 when you drop 104. It's like, okay, that was just as, that stop was just as big as scoring two or three down the other end. Yeah. And I think that goes like under underrated and uh, unseen sometimes. Do you think that there's any opportunity that Joe Mazzulla gets outcoached by Jason Kidd? I can't believe I'm still saying this, but I'm still not even sure on Joe Mazzulla. Like he seems like he seems like he's really coached a ton better this year. But like, how much of that is the fact that this roster is insane? Like, and they had another year together, pretty much. Like, yeah, and Brad Stevens has built basically an all-star team. Yeah, like we got two guys going to Team USA for the Olympics, and you could have had three or four. Yeah, like it wouldn't have been crazy if and you told Drew, me that. that like, Brown and White were going. Like, yeah. Drew and Tatum were going. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you could, it, it, would you be surprised if they said Brown was, like, the alternate? No, no. Not at all. You know, so it's 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 a situation where, like, yeah, he's he's coaching well. He's not doing anything. He, he's got out of their way. Let's put it that way. He's not doing anything to the detriment of the team. Um, so, yeah, can can Kidd out coach him? I mean, I don't. I, How do you feel about Kidd as a coach? Like, you think he's a solid coach? Like, I think he's been decent. Yeah, I think he's been pretty good. I, I just don't really think coaching in the NBA is as big as we want to make it. I think it's all down to execution of players. Like, you can install a strategy, but if your guys don't do it or don't buy in, it's it's just over. Mean shit. You know, so, like, having having guys with, like, these grand schemes of coaching, this isn't, it's not football. You know, you don't got to come up with a different defensive scheme every week. You know what you got to do. It's, all right, well, guys, Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving are out there. Let's try and stop them. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, so we'll try. <laughs> like, you know, like I don't. I mean, I'm sure I'm wrong, and there's much more complexities to it than I know because I'm not a professional basketball coach. Yeah. But I feel like when you get to this point, it's kind of just roll the balls out there, and whoever's got the best, the best players, players is gonna, are going to win. Gonna, whoever's going to execute is going to win this. Yeah, I feel you know? like you know a, a big part on the the defensive like schematics that the average fan probably doesn't like discuss. Like we want to sit there, and everyone wants to see like the offense. But yeah. I feel like this is. This is a big part about like the the defensive intensity, and I feel like this will translate, you know, to, to wins and things like that. Like, what what's your take on like a, on like a, a screen? Like, you want to go over, it, you want to go under it. Like, what? How do you feel like the best way? And, and I know you have to defend that differently for different players. But like, let's say Luca, like for example, like you have let's say Drew or JB's covering Luca, right? Like, yeah. you want them going on top of that screen all, all every time. You want, like, I know, it's tough. It's, it, I mean, for a guy like Luca, I, I kind of feel like we have three guys who can defend him. Or, like, nobody can defend him. We have three guys who I think are a, a, our best chance at a matchup for him. So, yeah, if it's one of those guys, just switch. You know, don't get yourself caught up in it and get a wide open guy rolling to the basket. Because Luca's just, he's a good passer, too. For sure. You know, if he was just, if he was just, shooting threes all day and not passing the ball, he's still getting tons of assists. You know, he's still the point guard as much as, you know, you'd think he's the main scorer. He's still the point guard of the Mavericks, you Absolutely. know? So, so yeah, I think I think in that situation you probably want to switch. But, like you said, it's matchup based. You don't want him torching Al Horford or, or, or torching Sam Hauser all day. Absolutely. So you got to kind of look at it and, and, and hopefully get the right matchup so that you can play those matchups. But, like we said... Luke is a guy who's going to do what he wants, and, you know, you just hope you outdo it with the guys who you have who can do what they want. You know, a couple more before we go into, sure. like, the NBA offseason, just yep. reflecting on the 23-24 season. Um, obviously, you know, season ticket holder, you just had a yep. great – thank you for, for t allowing me to go to ECF game, by the way. Yep. I appreciate it. Um, but you just had it, the, the Banners experience. Yeah. You uh, got got to, you know, have the – you got invited, and, and you know, we were talking about it a little bit prior to that. Um, you want to talk about what was going on at yeah. Banners and what yeah. kind of, like, you were invited to do? Oh, it was great. They had a season ticket holder, like, away game watch party. I think they kind of had an idea that the Celtics were going to either close it out on the road or, like, win one of those two away games so that it wasn't going to – you know, they didn't want people who paid for the whole season for years and years and years to miss out on the chance to, like, be in a crowd when they saw them clinch, so – 
yeah, they had uh, they had a season ticket holder event at Banners right at the Garden. Huge screen. It's like a movie theater size screen, and we all got to like kind of watch the game in a crowd. They had the crowd atmosphere. We had people cheering, and yelling, and stuff. Yeah, and when yeah. they win, people go nuts. You know, it was it was awesome. Um, they gave us like you know food and drink on the house, and like kind of they really took care of us. So as much as I complain about the money I pay to be a season ticket holder, <laughs> I'll tell you that the 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 staff there like. With how good the team is, you feel like franchises when they when their team is so good and winning so many games, they could just be like, forget the customer service stuff. We don't need to do that right now. We're yeah, in demand because we're money. winning. Yeah, but yeah. they really do. Like they let my kid do like high five kids on the court. They let me and my daughter shoot around on the court after games. Like That's there's awesome. so many like fun experiences they do and stuff like that. You know, tours of the practice facilities, all kinds of like cool stuff for my family and like, you know, the guys I split the season ticket with. So it's it, I, I I appreciate being a Celtics fan just because how they make you feel like all right. We want you here. Yeah. You know, it's not just, we want your money, but we also want you around, you know, so it's kind of cool. No, I mean, I think I think this is a good matchup for the Celtics. I think that it's a very different situation from the last time we were in the finals. Last time we were in the finals, it was like, let's shoot as many bombs from three and hope that we hit, more, yeah. hit more threes than, than, than Golden Rose. State, you know. I think we got a much better defensive overall performance and overall unit right now. We have elite defenders at the top of the key. We have uh, a quality rim protector in the middle, uh, and we have guys who can turn transition steals and blocks into baskets. Um, I think that that at this point, the Celtics are the team that has to be overcome instead of being the team that has to overcome someone else, especially with not defending, uh, not defending champs Nuggets. Sure. I think that would have been a little bit of a mental hurdle for them to get over. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I think now they, they probably have the confidence and see themselves as better than Dallas and feel like they can win this. And it's, you know, it's, it's, they just got to get out of their own way and do it. Absolutely. You know? No, I love it. You want to give us a, an MVP prediction if the Celtics win it all? Yeah, I'll say, I'll say Celtics win it all in five. Uh, and I think you get Tatum as the MVP just based on pure stat totals. You know, like he might not have that huge moment, but he, he led the team all playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. Yeah. He led in all three major stat categories. Um, and I think he continues to do that. And, and in a five game series, there's really no way you can hand it to somebody other than the guy who's leading in everything. Absolutely. No, I, I, I'm hoping that Tatum has the series to reflect, you know, in MVP. I think that game one is such an important game. And I know, sure. like, we talked about this a, a little bit on uh, earlier in the episode. I don't know why I have, like, such like a weird feeling. Everybody, like, just, just think of it in, like, a gambling perspective, yeah. right? Everybody, oh, Boston's at home game one. Even if the the series goes five or six, like Dallas might take game one or game two. Yep. I, I'm thinking Dallas is really going to give us a tough one game one. Um, but no, bet against them. Drive the line down. Yeah. Make it easier for me to get a cover. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, drive the line down. Drive the line down. Go nuts. Um, but uh, I think I think we're going to do it in six. I, I do just think Luca has proven that he's like that good. That even him alone, like I know he's not alone, but. Whatever his performance is can, you know, steer them in the direction of potentially yeah. pulling two. And I think they'll win the game at home. I think they might steal a game in Boston, and that's what would yeah. lead me to believe that it would be. We've um, seen six. previous finals. One that sticks out of my memory is the the one where, uh, speaking of Iverson again, where Philly faced off against the Lakers in like 2000 or 2001. And... Uh, Philly shocked them in the first game, and, yeah. won, and then they went and won four straight. Yeah, you know, like I so think I that's could, what it can it's be. It's like one of those wake up calls, like ah, oh, all right, we really got to go against this team. Yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, you could see something like that in game one. Honestly, they lose game one. I'm not. I'm still not worried. No, I'm you know, not I either. think I think they they are the better team, and I don't feel like there's a team on the planet that can win four out of seven games against versus the us right, right now. now. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Pino, thank you for sharing that. We're really excited. Absolutely. The two other conversations we're going to have is going to be the yeah. NBA offseason. And the episode that we're doing with Lou and Kev this weekend is the top 10 players in the NBA from the 23 24 season. Nice. Now, I know I didn't give you time, I didn't give I'm, you parameters. I'll just anything spit like, something out. I'll yeah. give you some bullshit. <laughs> I'll figure it out. So, you don't have to give me one through 10 on a list yeah. specifically, but I want you to talk about your top 10 players of this past season. Maybe yeah. some guys fell off because of injury. Maybe some guys inserted themselves in, a, in the conversation because yeah. of other guys being injured. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I mean, Jokic has got to be one. Uh, and then I'd probably go Luka. Uh, Shea, Gilgis Alexander, to me, had an insane breakout season and has made himself like an MVP candidate until he does something different. Like, For sure. Um, you know. LeBron still in that conversation? LeBron? Yeah. 
I mean, LeBron's in that conversation until he decides he doesn't want to be in that conversation. I agree. Anymore. No, I agree. You know, it's he's starting to be like he feels like Tom Brady at this yeah. point. Like he just you know set in, forget it. Yeah. When yeah. you feel like you don't want to be the top player in the world anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, LeBron's in the top ten conversation for sure. So that's fine. Um, Jalen Brunson has stepped himself into that kind of conversation. Obviously, Tatum is in there in Six, my mind. Seven. Uh, it's crazy to say this, but I think like a guy like a Demontis Sabonis has, has stepped himself into that kind of conversation. Okay. He's not like a crazy. Pick for like I think he had a couple MVP votes, like probably like fifth or sixth place votes, but he's in there. Giannis Antetokounmpo is in there again until he decides he doesn't want to be. Joel Embiid is in that conversation until he decides he doesn't want to be. Uh, what do I got? Nine. One more, yeah, one more. Uh, it's got to be someone from the Clippers that that Paul it, George or uh, James Harden. Not Holly Burton. Halliburton could be there. Uh, Maybe Maxi. Like I, I know, like it might be early with him, but like the seventy sixes made it far without Joel and Beach for, for a sure. long time. I mean, we've this is the thing we've seen guys have like that breakout season and fall back, which is even like why I want to like I feel like I put Shea Gilgis Alexander really high, but Shea was like in the top three MVP. Like he to me, he was at some point in the season he was the favorite for MVP. Yeah. You know, he fell off a little bit here and there and and, and Jogic just did video game numbers like he always does and that's it. No, but it's in the conversation. It's in the conversation. I mean man, you couldn't let me write down a piece of paper here. I'm not gonna say something <laughs> stupid. Um yeah, I'd probably put Ant over Jalen Brunson right now. Okay. You know, in that spot. But okay. but yeah, I mean uh, my top three is pretty uh, top three to five is pretty solidified and it's 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 Jokic Luca. And then it's probably Shea. Okay. You know, he's he had he had what was an MVP quality season. It reminded me of Derrick Rose's breakout season where he won an MVP at a real young age. And then Braun and Brunson? Uh, Braun and... Um, Maybe Tatum. Yeah. You know, Tatum Tatum's playing crazy ball right now. And, and and a guy like Brown is, like, just outside that top 10. He's probably, like, in the top 15 somewhere. You, you know? put Jalen Brown right now over Dame Lillard. Yeah. Yeah. Lillard, Lillard had a, a, a rough last season in... In Portland for his standards, and they did not have a great season in in Milwaukee. JB over Kawhi. No, I still gotta go Kawhi. I mean, it's, that, it, that, it, it's interesting because I feel like people are really starting to get fed up of, hey, like it, it, it's great you can be a top ten basketball player for thirty five to fifty five games of the year, but yeah, he's missed then, fourteen straight playoff games or some shit like that. Yeah, like, it's crazy. And it, him, George Harden, they're all like towards the end of their career. But still, like top players in the world, it's it's tough to say. Like, I mean, you guys, you got it, you got to factor an injury. No KD in your list. <laughs> what are you doing to me, man? You try to make me look stupid on the internet. No, no this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna put a video no, on so my daughter it, says I'm stop stupid. It. <laughs> stop it! Stop. No, that that's why I'm asking this conversation because yeah, it's I really mean, hard. And all of those names you can justify inside that list. Yeah, you had me say Demonte Sabonis instead of KD. Great. <laughs> right. You know, but like uh, what I'm saying is like there's the younger guys. Uh, there's there's a definite passion of the torch happening in the NBA right now. Guys like KD, uh, Kawhi, Dame Lillard are, are moving their way down. Like they're falling off in the league. And sure, could they come back and have a breakout season next year and be solidify themselves in the top ten for next season? Yeah. yeah. But as of right now, there's young guys like Halliburton, like Brunson, like Shea Gilgis Alexander, who are moving up in the league and, and asserting themselves as the next generation of dominant players. Like. When we talk about who's the players of the 2020s, those are the names we're going to say because these guys we're talking about right now are who were the players of the 20 teens. For sure. You know, they were winning championships in, in those years, and now they're going to start to be like the, the role player on the team or like the veteran leadership on the team, and these new guys are the ones who are going to be stepping up and, and passing the torch. This is, you know, like making me feel old again. This is like my eighth <laughs> generation of NBA Basketball. stars. You know, it's great. It's perfect. It's perfect. That's why we love having you, Pam. Yeah, we need some great. senior executive. Senior. senior. I, I, I love it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that, that's where all the money is. You get the senior executive expertise here in Peter. Whatever it takes, man. <laughs> that, no, that's that's the motto for the Celtics. I wanted to know, like, how, how close do you think a guy like uh, Bam Adebayo is in that conversation? He had a good year. Yeah, he had a good year. I mean, uh, better higher on that list than J- J- Jimmy Butler. Yeah, I mean, right now they 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 still made the playoffs. Butler's missing, you know, a significant amount of time and then missing the playoffs. He's he's in the top twenty, maybe. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I mean, if we look at like stats and pour over everything, I'm sure I can give you a more solid top ten for sure. But like, 
yeah, I mean, it, like you said, it's guys who are, are he could be taken over as, as the the guy on the Heat if Butler leaves. Butler might be out of town by the time we talk next. Absolutely, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, if he's that guy and he leads them to a playoff again, and he's the guy, sure, yeah, yeah he's in there. You know, we have a, a lot of, you know, upcoming news in, in the free agency world and, and sure. what's going to go on in the NBA offseason. We already talked a little bit about the draft. You know, there's there's a lot of names that we're talking about, you know, potentially moving places. I mean, LeBron's expected to stay as the Lakers, but he, sure. we know he'll, he'll likely opt out and just kind of do his thing like a little bit. But, you know, more, more on like the free agent names that like I kind of want to talk about, like, Brandon Ingram's going to be a big piece, like, if he yeah. could go to, like, a proper destination. you got guys like Murray and, and Trey Young that, that are being talked about yeah. that they can be flipped for, you know, the, the right, you know, piece and, and things yeah. like that. And, you know, I feel like there's a couple other teams, like, you, you know, Paul George is in a very unique scenario where he can choose to, like, hey, like, these old dudes, like, I've been, I've been playing and competing ball with these guys for a long time, but I could also be a missing piece for an OKC. Yeah. You know, Maybe and, go and like, back there? yeah, like that. So there's just so many different parts of the conversation that we can have about the NBA offseason. I want to know like what your thoughts were. Maybe some some giant takeaways, and then um, after this, I wanted to just talk about you know some teams that could be in a, yeah. a promising scenario going. I forward. think you know you mentioned guys like Ingram and and Young and 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 Murray. Like if those are dudes who want to go to a team and be like the guy, they're not going to have success. Like they're not going to have a ton of success. They might like get the max contract from a team, but then what? Like, yeah. what do you build around them? So, like, I think that their best bet for, for being a winner would be to, like, go to a team where they're the second or third guy, you know? Look at, like, a like a Drew Holiday, Derek White kind of situation. Like, where can I be the piece that's missing? Like you said, like in Oklahoma City. Like, if I'm Paul, Paul George, I don't know if I'm a black multimillionaire and I decide to move back to Oklahoma. No. I don't yeah, know if yeah, that's yeah. on the... On the on the docket, maybe it is, and I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> but like I don't. I'm know. just thinking in a basketball perspective. Obviously, yeah, like that's yeah. a, that's a team that needs some like veteran pieces for sure. I'm, I'm thinking like Ingram more specifically. Like I know that there were some murmurs about like yeah. Randall going in a different direction. Like I think that Ingram he wouldn't fit the Thibodeau scheme, but I feel like he's a, a great like smooth silky yeah. offensive player to pair with Brunson. He, his his offense reminds me a lot of Paul Pierce. You know, with like the the kind of it looks slow, but it's so smooth that you just score anyway. Yes, yes. You know, uh, Paul Pierce never looked super athletic, but he was always Dominant. crazy athletic when yeah. you asked the guys who had to defend him. For sure. You know, so so yeah, I could see a similar role like that. Um, maybe where he pairs with like an aggressive big, and like they kind of coexist and make it work. Um, I think that there's a few teams that need like that extra one piece, and it's just can they lure a guy there, like a Sacramento, like a like a even like a Utah, like when you you know you're never gonna draw a free agent there, but like you draft a couple of right guys, and all of a sudden there's that one spot, like sure. you know there's one of the teams that I think has a chance to like draw in a guy is Orlando. Um, because they've got that young star, no taxes. you know, so like, yeah, no, I mean, Florida, no, t- yeah, nice yeah, winters, yeah, yeah. no taxes, like stuff like that. Maybe you can draw in a guy who's like looking for like his third NBA contract and you pull him in even like a Cleveland, like, you know, playing with Donovan Mitchell doesn't seem like a bad deal. You think he's you know? staying in Cleveland? I don't really know. I mean, it's, it's it, his lack of want to come back in the playoffs was a little strange Weird. to me. Yeah, you think like, that had anything to do with like Jared Allen scenario? Because like he just didn't want to get like shot up like that. And like like health that's wise, wild to me. yeah, health wise, like I get it. But at the same time, like as a competitor, like he might never be back there again. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I think maybe sometimes guys look at it like, yeah, I'm gonna be back in the playoffs every year. A lot of those guys have played in the playoffs a ton, and they're just like, yeah, of course we'll be back. But then you ask a guy who's played like you know seven years for Charlotte, and you're like, nah, he might yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, so so I think. The Pacers could add a guy and be really good. I don't know what their contract. You think, you think the Pacers could still add? I don't I know see, what their contract situations like. I feel like they constructed like mid year kind of like perfectly because like if if Nembhard is actually going to be the guy that he was like throughout the playoffs, yeah. you got you got Holly Burton, you you got Siakam, and, and but can you sit still? Like if you just barely eked out the the Knicks, I like know, that's right. entire that's your competition. The Knicks, the Celtics, like Milwaukee, if they're healthy again, like how do you? How do you just say, like, all right, we're good. We'll just stay here. Like, My, yeah, you had a good run, but you got swept. Yeah. Like, you no. got to figure something out to get yourself up to that level. So, so adding a guy, like, even the Celtics. The Celtics made the NBA Finals, then made the Conference Finals. And 
traded added. like their third best player. Yeah, you know, and and added and made it made the themselves in the situation where they're in the NBA Finals again. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I think you can't just sit and stand pat unless you're like you won the championship. Yeah, I think I think like. It's tough because I want to say, like, add some bench depth because, you, like, I'm trying to think, like, Miles Turner is still, like, a dominant yeah. big. Like, Siakam's a great four. Like, like I think that they have, like, a pretty solid three if you team. look at that, like, around the league. I do think, like, if you could have, like, some some solid depth, I think, like, that would be great. Like, am I expecting Nemhard to drop, like, 25 a game no. like he was versus? Absolutely not. Not a chance. It's good to know that he's a shooter. Like, I don't think Neesmith's, like, a starter, but he played the yeah. amount of minutes that, like, a starter kind of does. He he's played a, aggressive, too. He, he played well. Yeah, he, he, he really did. I think he's a great defender. I think he attacks the rack. Um, it, it is just interesting, like, what would be, like, the piece to like fit in there would it be like more of like a shooting guard to put next to Holly because I don't know if he naturally feels like he's like a scorer like yeah he led know? the league in assists yeah so like yeah I mean you, you you can always put more scoring around a guy who's got that kind of vision um but yeah I mean I don't think I don't think it was a fluke that they made the conference finals but I don't think they're a shooter to get right back there who so do I think they gotta do something between them and the Knicks next season who do you feel like is in a better spot to get back to where they were I think the Knicks have the better scorer and the Pacers have the better overall like team and defense, so I, I think the Knicks. I think the Knicks are in a better spot, and I think the Knicks are going to have an easier time attracting players to play with Jalen Brunson than you're going to have drawing people into to Indiana. Indiana yeah. Absolutely. What are, What are some teams in the West that you feel like could kind of I don't want to say make that jump, but could be potential future threats besides uh, like OKC? Yeah, like o- OKC team. I think is going to win a championship at some point. They got these super young guys playing extremely well. At like 21 years old. I think I feel like they look like the Celtics in the conference finals 4 years ago where yes. we were like, "Oh my god, I can't believe these guys made a conference finals." Yes. You know, so so yeah, I could see OKC for sure. Um Obviously I, the Mavs <laughs> will, are expected to be back. I can't I can't see a situation where the Nuggets aren't right, right back at it. You know, with you Jokic out of peace? with Jokic there, yeah. Who doesn't want to play with that guy? Yeah, like who would just say like, yeah, all right, I, I can jump alongside the best player in the world, and he's still gonna pass me the ball. Yeah, yeah. like I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Like, yeah, like I, my scoring might go up playing with the MVP. Yeah, that's not really a thing. For so sure. yeah, I think I think people would be happy to go there. I think people are gonna have to take pay cuts to go there if they're gonna keep guys like you know, have Jamal Murray stay there. Um, and I think that the the biggest misstep they made this year. We're saying like, all right, let's just have, let's see what happens. A couple guys, maybe they'll step up and get better. And they didn't quite get to the level they expected. So I think they'll probably add a guy. Maybe it'll be a situation like the Celtics where they pick up off the trash heap from the NBA and hopefully you re- re- regenerate a guy and make him back to what he used to be or have a guy have his breakout season. For sure. But yeah, I don't. Again, you can't stand pat if you didn't if you didn't win it. Last question before sure. I open it up to you, Pino. What's going on with the ladies? I don't know. Signing JJ. Is it Reddit. a mess? Is it a mess? <sighs> it's tough. I to feel say. like they've been a disaster, honestly. Yeah, I mean, what are they? Three years off their last championship. Yeah, three seasons off. About to be four seasons off in their last championship. It's tough to say anything's a mess in LA because you've seen them turn around from being like bottom of the league to like top that. contenders in a second because they they're the draw. Like it's it's the Yankees, it's the it's the Dallas Cowboys kind of situation. Like Even if they suck, it's an attractable yeah. spot. Yeah. So so yeah, I think they could draw they could draw in people to play with LeBron. Same way, like if LeBron takes a team friendly kind of contract or structures his deal in a way that like they can bring in guys. Then yeah, I mean I think they could be right back at it, but I think like like we talked about, the West is way too tough right now. They're not gonna, as currently constructed, they're not gonna do anything. Yeah. And then you had a first year head coach with no coaching experience, and it's like, man, this is gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, know? like like the the Lakers Twitter is gonna be real enjoyable for me as a Celtics <laughs> fan next year. As I was talking about like what the, what the coaches, yeah, yeah like everybody's that. a bomb, everybody's yeah. terrible. LeBron's the worst thing that ever happened. Where's Kobe Bryant? Bring Kobe back. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's yeah. all it's all stuff like that. Um, but. And it's cool, like that. Like you won like the in season tournament, and, like the first one yeah. and stuff like that. But like that doesn't carry like any similar no. value to like like. No, it's not the same as as a championship, of course. But like I think maybe they they were just like, all right, we got something, you know. Like and even if you're a Lakers fan, like I'll, I'll, I'll still talk. If I'm a Celtics fan, I'm still talking trash about that. I'm like, yeah. yeah, well, whatever. We won the tournament. Screw you. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and you know, does it hold up? No, of course not. But I'm still not going to shut up about it. For sure, no, you know? for sure. So for like sure. I, th- I don't know, Lakers fans. If you ask them in December, they were thrilled. 
you ask them now, they're like, what is happening to my team? Yeah. And, you know? and, and that's the kind of franchise where things can change like that so quick. For sure. You know? And I feel like the question that they're asking themselves is like, hey, like, are we really about to get like Brawny? Like, is that yeah. really about to be like, what's, what's going on? Because when, yeah. when we had this conversation last, we were talking about Brawny not even being drafted. And now it's like, he kind of seems like he's a shoe in for the top 10. I don't know about top 10, but I mean, I think someone's going to draft him. Same yeah. reasons we talked about. Yeah. Somebody's going to want to sell jerseys that say James number 23 or number yeah. six, whatever he picks. And I think the last team that could do that is the Lakers because everybody's already got a Lakers jersey James. that says James on the yeah. back. Yeah. So, you know, like maybe maybe he ends up somewhere else that they, they can maybe draw LeBron for the last couple of years of his career. And, and if not make a run, like maybe that's not realistic, but like sell some tickets and sell some TV revenue and stuff like that, you know, yeah. make it an enjoyable couple seasons. Absolutely. Pino, yeah. anything you'd like to discuss on, on the episode? Uh, something that I wanted to mention the last time, and I, well, I'll still always mention it, is watch more women's basketball. Watch more Oh, NBA. my God, it's been electric. It's awesome. And I've been telling you guys for, like, nah. three years. Pino, and all yeah. of a sudden, now everybody's like, oh, kid, the WNBA is sick. I'm like, yeah, no, I've been telling you about it. Nah, P the WNBA needs to pay this, man. I'm done. <laughs> Because now, and, and look, like, like it, it could have been, like, a little bit more physical, but I feel like now, like, with, with Caitlin Clark obviously being It's involved, been physical. No, it's been physical. I, WNBA has been, they, they are dogs, man. They play, like, crazy. It is awesome. I, I've been watching it. It's, the, it's like the summer basketball fix for basketball nerds for years, and yeah. it's been good for years. I, just, I feel like people, like, see her walking on the court, and they're like, oh, she's not coming in here and, like, thinking she's going to do Of course not. Yeah. Of course not, because the, there's women who've been doing that in the league for, for a years. long time. Yeah. Brianna yeah. Stewart's a killer. Yeah. Alyssa Thomas is a killer. Adrian Wilson is a killer. For sure. Like, these, these are, like, the woman whose record she broke, she's going to be, like, to break the NCAA championship, uh, tournament record for most points. She's going to have to face up against that. her, and yeah. she's like, oh, you broke my record? All right, good. I'll drop five threes in your face. Like, Legit. It's a good basketball league. You need to be watching it. Yeah, love that. That's awesome. No, I love the plug. Yeah. Pino, Pino, what you got going on for the summer? Anything fun? Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I got a couple ideas for maybe some summer jobs and maybe just, you know, hanging around and going fishing with my kid, too. Nice, Nice yeah. to have some free time. Pino, whenever you need an extra fisherman, yeah. let me know. Jump in, jump in. <laughs> but we gotta, we, the only thing is, if I'm coming, we're going to eat it after. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the best part of it. Catch and cook, man. I love it. Absolutely. Celtics fans, NBA fans, we're amped up. The next time you'll probably be hearing some Celtics talk is when we're talking about how the parade was. Live from the parade. What, yeah, cool. what the finals was like, you know, I don't care what you're doing that day, what's going on with school, we're hitting we're government going center, we'll we're break. going nuts, like it's fucking 2008 all Climbing over. Climbing on man. a duck boat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for making the ride, taking absolutely. the trip. Um, always fun. Always fun talking ball. Kev, fuck you. <laughs> Kev, I love you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but guys, it's going to be an inter interesting series. We're excited. The Mavs are a very worthy contender. Yep. Um, and it's it's what I will say as the last takeaway is it's really unique to see how much the the European ball players have really dominated yeah. the NBA the past yeah. couple of years. We've talked about it before, like back in the day, the Europeans were considered like soft, like jump shooters and stuff, and now they're like oh, the guys the bringing the toughness to the league for sure, so absolutely. Great. Since the Sandbox fans, you guys can catch our schedule prediction series throughout the month of June and July. We'll be doing a live episode at Sammy Carlos, June 22nd, doing the AFC East schedule predictions. Get I know the eggplant palm. Yeah, right. <laughs> <It's phenomenal. laughs> I know all you Pats fans are going to want to hear what Kev's giving them for a record as a Bills fan, all the yapping Twan's doing. And we can't forget to shout out our sponsor, so shout out to the East Boston Athletic Board. Our banquet is coming up the end of June, recognizing some of the, the most worthy youth in the entire city, getting some recognition, some money to go on to school, um, and just being recognized for all the great work they've done throughout high school. You guys know the deal. Peace, love, five stars, nothing less.